the Nexus studied the board patiently. Steadily, the pawns of the opposing forces inched towards each other, vying for control of the battlefield. With precise timing, they moved the bishop into place. A portal opened up between the dimensions, and the sounds of battle could be heard echoing on the other side. The time has come, Master. May your corruption embrace this land and feed upon the souls of those who stand in our way. Necromancer screamed as the portal's energy grew more chaotic. Patiently, they leaned back from the altar as a solar arrow came rocketing through the portal, colliding with the ethereal board. The board shattered, and pieces scattered in an explosion of contrasting energies. Hyperion's solar energy colliding with the portal caused the portal to vanish, along with six predestined pieces which slipped through the temporary veil. The Nexus looked at the cosmic hourglass which sat on the altar, only a few drops remained to fall. Even a being as supreme as Hyperion could not hope to comprehend that he too was but a pawn in the plan which continued to unfold. How's it going guys? Darth Shigong here, gaming on the dark side, GOTDS, and yeah, that's right man, we got some brand new 5 star relics and Donna Titans to go over, so without much ado man, let's jump right into this. So, they dropped the blog today, we got our brand new 5 star relics, if you've been paying attention, you knew these guys were coming, these are the chess pieces, we got ourselves the knight, a rook, looks like a queen and king, a bishop and a pawn. Now it says here, these immensely powerful five-star relics will be available at altars in the Divine Shine Shrine for nine, nine thousand gems? It's over nine thousand! Holy crud, they're right. Yeah, nine thousand Divine Gems. Like the arthropods, these will be available in standalone altars for each relic. So we are definitely paying a premium to be able to get a guaranteed relic of your choice. Man. That's a lot. However, I think I called this man. When they added in that divine conversion thing, I knew that there was gonna be some inflation when it came to divine gems. I mean, gas is going up in price, food is going up in price, divine gems have gone up in price, and now even five-star relics have gone up in price. Is nothing, is nothing sacred from inflation during this time, man? 2021, end already. This is insane. Anyways, guys, I would love to hear below your thoughts. Do you think 9,000 Divine Gems is too much? Do you think they jumped up too quickly? I mean, I can see it being 8,000 like the like the Mage Staff, but 9,000? These things better be awesome, dude. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into these ones. We're going to start off, you know, just looking at them one by one. All right, so let's start off with the Berserker Relic, the Prancing Knight. All right, the description says 80% Titan Troop damage two times an attack 100 percent tight uh troop armor piercing two times an attack and 60 percent titan and troop critical makes this a not too bad of a relic now what's really going to set this guy apart though is this brand new i don't want to say the synergy skill so much as much as it's a prestige synergy now what i mean by that is it seems that these new relics are going to increase in power based on the prestige level of the titan they're equipped on so, for example, in this one here, it says on enemy death, you get a 25% chance to get an Omega spell, probably of the same element, right? So, it has a 5% per prestige level. Now, what that means is for every level of prestige you have, you're just going to add 5%. So, since you're going to be P10, that'd be an extra 50%. So, it's basically going to give you a 75% chance to add an Omega summon spell on enemy death. Um, that's pretty interesting how that works out guys. I mean, it's, it's another new little gimmick they got going on here um, I'm wondering if these five-star relics will be the only place we see something like this or if they're gonna be introducing that somewhere else um, Quite interesting. So all in all guys this relic is gonna give you a hundred and sixty percent damage on attack for your Titans and troops 200% um, armor piercing for your troops and like I said, on that P10, if you have a P10 Titan, a 75% chance to add an Omega Summon. Now, what's interesting here, and I'll be talking about this in most of the relics, is the extra skill only applies on offense. So it would be a waste on a defensive Titan 
uh, you have a Berserker one, right? Let's say like you're um, a Beowulf or something like that. I don't know why they're pigeonholing it, and I don't know why they don't just make that blanket for offense and defense. It'd be better, in my opinion. It seems like they're really trying to direct how you're going to use these things. Um, but you'll see that kind of comes into play later on with the Ranger one when we get to that one. Let's move on to the next relic. The next relic here is going to be the Righteous King. This is the champion relic. Uh, it says here 80% Titan and Troop damage two times an attack, 100%. Titan and Troop Armor Piercing, two times an attack, and 40% Titan and Troop Melee and Range Resist. That's not bad. Uh, so basically, on attack, it's going to give you 160% damage, 200 Armor Piercing, 200% Armor Piercing. Now let's look at the Offensive Prestige Synergy here. On Titan Critical, you have a 10% chance per Prestige level to summon a Corrupted Troop, a max of three of those. Now, obviously, with a Prestige Level 10, you would have a 100% chance on Critical to summon a corrupted troop. So let's say you were using like Lakeian or something like that. On his critical hits, you would get yourself a corrupted horde. Um, three of those. Now, once again, this only applies on offense. Why it's not applying for any defense? Well, for the most part, we really don't have too many defensive champions. Um, here and there, they kind of exist, but nothing that's really meta per se. Doesn't mean that something couldn't come up. But this kind of points to me thinking that most likely, if there is a new DG champion titan, It'll probably be an attacker to go along with this relic. That's just my little um, irresponsible prediction on that one there. But, you know, I like the armor piercing being for the Titan and the troops a lot more than just troops. That helps out a little bit. So this one's not too bad. I like the Righteous King. All right, let's move on. Next up is the Infiltrator Relic, the Clandestine Pawn. Interesting, clandestine pawn, huh? All right, so we've got ourselves 50% Titan and troop damage two times an attack. 200% Titan and Troop Armor Piercing, nice, and 50% Titan and Troop Melee Resist. We're getting up in there, right? We're getting busy. Now, since it's on attack, that means you're going to have 100% on attack and 200% Armor Piercing. But look at the offensive prestige skill here. We've got 5% Titan and Troop Critical and 25% Army Armor Piercing per prestige level, max of 10. So that means that you're going to have 50% extra critical and... 250% armor piercing. That's a total of 450% armor piercing. Not bad at all. But who are you going to put this on? All right, we just had Zababa come out uh, again with her synergy relic. I could see it maybe helping her a bit. So she says, you know, uh, you know, this would be awesome on a solo infiltrator if we had one that came out to do some serious damage. Uh, uh, you just need one that has enough armor and health to kind of go through the, the attackers nowadays, right? That's kind of the sticking point. But dang, that's a lot of AP. Uh, granted, it is for the army too, so I'm thinking maybe when Minotaur comes out, if we get the Minotaur reskill, this would be awesome. If they make Minotaur an uh, attacking titan, this would be pretty freaking good, guys. So anyways, I mean, for the most part, we don't have any defensive infiltrators, so I can see why this is offense only. But uh, hey, this one's not... That's some crazy AP though, man. That's some crazy armor piercing. I like that. I like it. All right, let's move on. And on to the new Ranger Relic, the Prescient Bishop. Let's see here. 60% Titan and Troop damage two times in the tax. That's 120%. 100% Titan and Troop armor piercing. Three times on attack. 300% armor piercing. Very cool. And then 50% Titan and Troop all elemental resist. Okay. Now, on offense, the prestige skill here on enemy death, a 50% chance to produce a minus 25% armor and armor piercing aura, plus 5% aura size per prestige level, a max of 10. So basically, what that means is that P10, the aura that gets produced by the dying enemy unit, right? So the enemy dies, their little unit has like a little stink aura around it that's going to take away armor and armor piercing from any enemy units caught within it will be 50% larger than at, well, P0. Now, this only applies on offense. So I wouldn't obviously be putting this on my garrison because it's not going to help out as much on that sense, right? This is going to be for our attackers. So I guess the Mage Staff and Dragonfly are still going to be pretty much the defensive relics for Rangers that you're going to be seeing when you're going out there, right? Um, I don't, I mean, this guy's got some good stuff on it, don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying it would hurt you horribly to have it on defense but it's obviously more geared towards offense um overall it's a pretty interesting relic i am kind of curious to see how that um aura affects things 
and um, it'll add for some interesting play. But uh, yeah, yeah, there we go, guys. All right, let's move on. And on to the Paladin Relic, the Radiant Queen. This here is going to give you 80% Titan and Troop health, two times in defense, so 160% extra health there for your Titan and Troops. 60% Titan and Troop, all elemental resist. I'll make that easy to cap. And then 200% all Troop armor. Armor is always helpful, right? Now, on the Prestige Synergy here, on defense only, not offense, finally our first defensive relic, on Allied Troop Death, you have a 3% chance per Prestige level, so 30% in total at P10, right? To put a 25 second death timer on a random enemy troop, a max of eight of them, so like there's eight troops possible. Now, see, this sounds interesting. So think of it like Hyperion's um, Colossi that have a limited amount of time they live, and they have a little timer you kind of see as it gets closer. I want to say it starts around 10 or so, maybe a little higher, and you see it count down and they drop after it hits zero, I guess. It's kind of the same thing, except it'll start at 25 seconds for a, a troop. Now, this skill only applies on the defense. It would have been kind of cool if it applied to the enemy Titan as well. It looks like it's just for troops. Um, that would be kind of interesting if you had a small chance of hitting the actual Titan and dropping their Titan as well. That would be pretty interesting to see. All in all, this is a very... Uh, I don't know. Um, the, the base skills are pretty cool. I can see that going well on something like, let's say, an Oceanus or something like that. Um, as far as the prestige skill goes, someone brought up a good point on... Uh, I think it was Churro stream and basically saying this would be horrible to see this 25 cent uh, 25 second countdown land on a troop that's just about to die anyways because it's kind of a waste you only get eight of them now, obviously you're gonna want this to land on a troop that's notoriously hard to kill and lives forever so um, if you're fighting something like a Minerva and uh, I guess you know or someone else that's a really tough sticky unit that just will not die oh that sounded so wrong what I just said that sounded so horrible as a tough mean undying troop <laughs> let's say right not a not a sticky unit there um that it would drop that guy in 25 seconds that is of course if you live for 25 more seconds or you have 25 seconds left in the fight still uh, I'm interested to see how this works Obviously, I won't be able to see it myself if I put it on my Titan because it's on defense. So we'll need people to be videoing the fight against a Titan equipped with this to see does it help? Is it uh, really a factor I have to worry about? Or is it just more of a gimmick and you can forget about it, right? Especially if the fight ends very quickly. Anyways, that is the Paladin Relic. Let's move on to the last Relic, which I want to say is the Guardian Relic. Alright, so we've got the Stalwart Rook here for the Guardian Relic, the little castle piece. You got 70% Titan and Troop health, two times in offense, so it's an extra 140% health, 50% Troop all elemental resist, and 50% Titan and Troop melee range resist. Cool, cool. Now the defensive prestige skill here is gonna be on allied death, it will shield one troop per prestige level within its aura. So when one of your good guys drops, he'll have a little aura around him. And a prestige level one, or you know, it's basically going to be one. So I guess, oh man, dude, so you had no prestige on a Titan. This is just level 60. This would do nothing for you. But if you had a pre 10 Titan, that would be 10 units that would get um, a shield on it. Hopefully, it splashes. It makes it even better. That's kind of cool. But a max eight times. So technically, that's a max of 80 shield spells. Interesting. Now, I mean, you can love or hate shield spells. I would say this probably synergizes well with like a staff of earth. But still, though, dude. Um, I don't understand a couple things here. One, it's it's a pretty lackluster skill. Shielding is whatever. And two, why doesn't it shield the Titan? If the Titan's in the aura, why couldn't the Titan get a shield as well and make that guy last a little bit longer? All in all, it doesn't seem like a super powerful relic in that sense. Unless they do something with those shield spells. Maybe add something that makes it even more gnarly. Or if you have a Guardian Titan that already has an innate one of its invoke skills or something that helps to buff shield spells now i can see this starting to get interesting there might already be one i don't know right off the top of my head i can't think of it if there is a guardian titan that you guys know of that buffs shield spells please comment below and let me know because maybe this will be a relic that makes that particular guardian titan more relevant anyways that is all of the brand new five star relics um as you can see here the SPP accounts, right? So that's like Zalon, Yuki, um, Solja, 
and I think those are really the three that do anything with their SPP accounts. I, I'm trying to think who else has one. I know someone who needs one and who should have one. <clears throat> Vintage, he should get one, right? And all that. There should be more SPP accounts, but still, at least the ones we do have that are active, um, they should be getting these relics within the week. And that means they're obviously going to be doing some streams, hopefully, and showing them off. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they can do on attack and defense, how they help out the current um, uh, meta, what they change, and what these could possibly mean for the meta moving forward. I am very interested to see what the new Titans are going to bring and how they're going to synergize with these particular relics. Um, it will be interesting to see. Anyways, guys, that's the video for this um, new relics more expensive now all i'm waiting for and i know a lot of you guys are too bring on the new divine titans please i want to see these suckers i want to see what they can do it'll be awesome anyways guys until then um or until next week's event i guess this is your host darth shigong and as always i hope to catch all of you gaming on the dark side